If you think ductwork is just a bunch of sheet metal, think again. Every piece of ductwork that we create is designed for the most efficient airflow in your building. Welcome back to Behind the Yellow Tape. We're here today at Colonial Web's fabrication shop. Today we're going to be talking about how ductwork gets made. Ductwork is in virtually every building, but how does it get made and how does it get to the point where it's ready to be installed? Stay tuned and you're going to find out. We're here today with Ron Potts, our manufacturing manager, and we're just gonna ask him a few questions so we can learn how it's made. All right, so we're just gonna start off with, uh, what type of ductwork do we make? Well, generally we make rectangular ductwork. It's in various sizes, but right now in the shop, uh, we're putting a lot of large ductwork out. Okay, and so what is that used for in, in our buildings? Well, in our buildings, ductwork is a process of moving airflow throughout the building. It's uh, return air, supply air, and the ventilation. Nice, nice. So what do we first start with when we're creating a piece of duct? The first process is uh, how it comes in. Uh, it actually comes in either a roll or a long flat sheet of metal. So the first thing we need to do is cut that. Let's say that we are cutting large flat sheets of sheet metal. Um, we would first take that to a large plasma table where the plasma would cut the ductwork into smaller shapes. From there, it gets put through the first operations line, which is more or less your end connections. Whether it's got a flanged end or a Pittsburgh end, all of that happens in the first operations. And that's how you connect all four sides of a piece of duct. You have two different types of end connections. You'll have the seam connections, and then you'll have an end connection to actually piece the pieces together, whether it's in the shop or the field, depending on what the customer would like. Once we put the end connections onto sheet metal, then we take it to the press brakes. So everything will get broke up and then set together on a cart and pushed over in front of the assembly tables. At the assembly tables, that's when our uh, operators actually take the pieces and they start to put all of the seams together. You have different ways of putting the seams together, but the most common way that we attach the seams to make all four sides of a piece of duct is uh, through an air hammer. Once a piece of duct is actually assembled at the assembly tables, it is then moved over to sub-assembly area, and that's where, um, depending on our job requirements, what sub-assembly is is actually connecting multiple pieces of duct, so we may every now and then sub up 15 foot lengths or 12 foot lengths. It all depends on what the customer is requesting. From there, uh, then in each piece of duct is QC'd. They verify the length of the pieces and they also double check the orientation. If everything looks good, they will put their initial on a sticker that is on the piece of duct and then we will take a blue wrapping and we will wrap and cover the ends of pieces of sheet metal uh, before we load it on the truck. So this, this seems like a pretty big process here. Now I'm sure each person would probably have a different answer for this, but I mean, what do you think the most difficult uh, part of this process is? Honestly, I would say that uh, quality checking is one of the most difficult because that's where you have to really look over our drawings uh, at the finished product and make sure that we're sending out our, our correct pieces to the customer. How do we get the finalized duct to our customers? We actually have a fleet of box trailers or flatbeds out in the back here. It's a, it's a quite a big process to coordinate, uh, load everything up on the desired transportation and send that out to the job sites. Do we have the ability to customize ductwork for customers? One of the neat aspects of ductwork and making it here in the shop is just how how some of our customers want some of this stuff work to be made. There's a lot of uh, process just, just besides connecting uh, pieces of rectangular metal, there's a lot of welding that goes on in the back of the shop that uh, has to do with a lot of stainless duct work or some of the uh, some of the specialty aluminum duct work as well. Thanks Ron for spending a few minutes with me this afternoon. I hope you found it as interesting as I did. So next time you're out and about, maybe at your favorite restaurant, in your own office building, look up because the duct work that's there could have came out of our very own fabrication shop here at Colonial Web. Thanks everyone for tuning into this episode. Behind the Yellow Tape is a video series created by us here at Colonial Web. 
to kind of give you guys a little bit inside scoop about what goes on at a mechanical contracting company. Colonial Web is one of the largest commercial mechanical and electrical contractors here in the Mid-Atlantic region. We specialize in service and construction in HVAC, plumbing, electrical, refrigeration, and industrial refrigeration. Yeah, and if you guys want to learn anything more about Colonial Web, please visit our website, colonialweb.com. And of course, you don't want to miss any more of these awesome videos, so make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's growing every day, more content posted weekly. Check it out. Thanks, guys.